honestly, people think it's it's really odd to think that somebody can operate on the wrong side of your body in, in 2021, or they can leave a sponge in you in 2021, um, but it happens. If you or a loved one are victims of medical malpractice, where do you turn for help? We are going to find out today on Ask the Lawyer. Hi everybody, I'm Judy Maggio with AskTheLawyers.com and my guest today is South Carolina attorney, Randy Hood. We have a quick reminder for you though before we get started. If you want to ask Randy questions about your specific situation, go to askthelawyers.com. Click the button you'll see at the top of the page that says ask a lawyer. It doesn't cost you anything at all to get your questions answered that way. Right now though it's my turn to ask the questions and we really appreciate Randy giving us his time today. First question Randy, can you tell us a bit about your experience filing medical malpractice claims for folks who have suffered injuries due to surgical errors. Um, certainly, Judy. I hope you're you're well. Um, a surgical error is uh, the type of thing that happens much more often than anybody would ever expect, um, and it could include operating on the wrong side of the body. It could include operating on the wrong disc if they're doing spinal surgery. It could include um, getting into your bowel for any type of uh, internal surgery in the abdominal area, and then it causes a bowel perforation. They sew you up and you get sepsis. Um, it could be caused by leaving a sponge or a foreign object in your body. Um, it could be caused by um, cutting a, a, a bile duct and a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is basically the removal of your gallbladder. Um, it could be caused by cardiac, where they, where they somehow actually cause a, a puncture um, in, your, in your heart area, and it causes something called cardiac tamponade. Um, there's a multitude of things that, that happen when a surgical error occurs. Um, but, but honestly, people think it's, it's really odd to think that somebody can operate on the wrong side of your body in, in 2021, or they can leave a sponge in you in 2021, um, but it happens. And it happens much more frequently than anybody would ever believe. These sound like very serious situations where mis these mistakes are made. What are the injuries that people go through when something like this happens? You know, it's uh, a lot of times it can be an infectious process. If they leave something in the wrong part of your body, I mean, excuse me, if they leave something in your body, um, it all, it's a foreign object that's not supposed to be there. It can cause infections. Um, if someone uh, gets into your bowel, causes a bowel perf and sews you back up, um, it, it requires vigilance after any procedure, but in a case of something like that, a perforated bowel, um, it can cause horrendous injury. It can kill someone. It can cause sepsis. Um, and so it, it could be cardiac tamponade where you basically cause the heart to stop beating. Um, it causes death. Death many times is the result of a surgical error. And sometimes you'll see, obviously, infection. Um, you could also, uh, take out an organ. If you operated on the right kidney and you're supposed to be operating on the left kidney, you take out an organ that's not supposed to be taken out. Um, there's just a multitude of things that can happen to someone if a surgical error occurs. And if someone does have a bad outcome after a particular surgery, how do you know if it's medical malpractice? What's the difference between, say, a surgical error and a, just a bad outcome after surgery? You know, that's a, that's a great question, Judy. Um, I, I wish I had a, had a great answer for you. Uh, the, the best that I can tell you is if someone has suffered a serious injury after a surgery and it wasn't supposed to occur, you probably need to talk to a lawyer. It may not mean there's a case. Um, I, I personally will look at, I'll, I'll have conversations with people or look at, or my staff will review, uh, thousands of cases this year for me personally, not for other people in my firm. And of those, we may file 50 to 100. Um, so there's, there's, a, there's a huge amount of cases that come in 
And a lot of times, even though you think there's a case there, it's not. But unless you have it reviewed, you don't know. And what it takes is somebody that breached the standard of care. That means they did something that few other doctors would have done under the same or similar circumstances. And if a doctor breached the standard of care and that breach caused you terrible damages um, or bad damages, then there's probably going to be a lawsuit involved. So who determines that standard of care? The standard of care is determined by a lot of things. Um, there is a, a periodical repository um, where most of the medical literature goes um, from all over the world. Um, and that's called up to date. And that is something that is used by medical professionals on a daily basis. Um, they have to keep themselves apprised of the literature because there's, there's changes every day in our world. Um, it could be textbooks, though textbooks, to be frank with you, um, are becoming outdated. Just like anything else with, with the change in technology, something that's more than six months to a year old may not have efficacy or reliability any longer. And so it's much more about the current literature than it is about a textbook 20 years ago, though there are certain textbooks that still are, 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 are can be considered reliable. Um, it's also experience, um, you know, if and some of it's common sense. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you don't leave a pair of uh, hemostat, the scissors, in someone's body. Um, somebody just left them by mistake during a surgical error. Um, but there may, may be other things that are very, very complicated. For instance, um, someone goes in and they have um, an abdominal procedure. A woman has a, a hysterectomy and, and she's had two cesarean sections and you have a, a, uh, what can be called a concrete belly or there's a lot of adhesions and the doctor has to excise those adhesions in order to be able to move around in the belly. And if somehow he pulls something and he can't see it, but it pulls, it's, it adheres to your bowel, makes a hole, sews you back up, and then you leak bowel contents into your body for three days and get septic, that may be a case and it may not be a case. It depends on how vigilant they were in regard to your post-surgical treatment. And so it really gets really, it's hard to say what is a case and what's not a case. Um, what I would say is if you had a procedure and you suffered a serious injury that was unexpected, I would have it seen by somebody. I would have it looked at by a lawyer. I think a lot of people have the misunderstanding that medical malpractice harms doctors and hospitals. Talk about that from your perspective. I, I think if you have someone who will be, be intellectually honest with you, um, they're gonna tell you the opposite. Uh, medical malpractice is quality control. People think that we cause the medical rates to go up it's a, an infinitesimal um, amount that it causes it to go up. Because like I said, I will have thousands come to me and I tell a thousand people, I don't think you have a case. I don't think you have a case and here's why. Those are a thousand people that are not gonna file a lawsuit against a doctor. And the ones that I bring are a type of a situation where it is resolved Nine, I would say 98 to 99% of my cases are resolved by settlement. I have to go to court probably once a year or once every couple of years to try a case because there is a, a, a dispute. But in the cases I do go to trial, it's a dispute over what they consider to be the value of the claim versus whether a doctor did something wrong or not. And what this requires is is someone who understands the medical malpractice process. I would think that they would need a medical professional on staff. We have a nurse on staff and we have nurses that we work with and we have hundreds of doctors that we have talked with, thousands of doctors that we have spoken with about these cases. Um, and you've got to have that team and those people that are able to say, yes, this is a case or no, this is not a case. And we, have a lot more non-cases than we do have that are meritorious cases. 
Such when great... I say we have a lot more non-cases, we have a lot more non-cases that contact us. We don't bring those cases. Understand. Such vital information today. Thank you so much, Randy, for answering our questions about medical malpractice situations. That will do it for this edition of Ask the Lawyers. My guest has been South Carolina attorney Randy Hood. We do have a reminder if you have specific questions you want to ask Randy, go to askthelawyers.com. Click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer and just ask away. Thanks so much for being with us today. I'm Judy Maggio with Ask a Lawyer.